Today's video is sponsored by Nutra Collagen. For 10% off premium collagen supplements, head to healthcoachkate.com forward slash collagen. What an absolute sleepy kitty. Are you sleepy? morning guys welcome back to my channel I am just getting ready to go to the gym this morning and obviously you can tell by the title we're doing another what I eat in a day video hello Zeus today I'm going to be talking about and eating the lazy keto diet but I need to head out the door right now so I'll talk to you about that a little bit later So I got home from the gym and lay down on my couch and started scrolling through Instagram and TikTok and I cannot be bothered <laughs> getting up. But I have things to do. I have to make my coffee. Uh, you know when you just like have a hard workout and then you're just exhausted afterwards? But it's only 9 a.m. so I can't be exhausted <laughs> right now. Ah, okay, let's get going. <laughs> Okay, so my current Bulletproof coffee recipe includes butter, as always, and then the Keto Collagen from Nutra Collagen. This is really great because it already has MCT oil in it, so I don't have to add any extra. Another ingredient I used to add, and yeah, I add sometimes, but I don't know, I kind of just go through phases, is an egg yolk, which I know sounds absolutely crazy, but don't knock it till you try it. Put an egg yolk in your Bulletproof coffee. It makes it so frothy and delicious. Maybe I will put one in. No, I think I'm just gonna stick with butter today. <laughs> Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Bulletproof Coffee, maybe this is your first time on my channel. If it is, definitely click that subscribe button. But Bulletproof Coffee is a type of coffee that is filled with fat, pretty much. And the idea is that it helps you to extend your fasting window. And I know that technically anything breaks a fast, but there are different variations of fasting, one of which being Bulletproof Fasting, because when you're drinking a bulletproof coffee it's not impacting your blood sugar it's not going to impact your insulin if it can help you to fast longer and push your first meal until later in the day it might even benefit you for weight loss so yes it technically breaks a fast but it doesn't break a fat fast <laughs> and that's the thing i get a lot of questions of people being like can i eat this can i have this in my fasting window this and that there really isn't a right or wrong answer. Oh, it's my kettle. When it comes to the nuances like this, you need to ask yourself, is it helping me get towards my goal or is it stopping me from getting towards my goal? Because yes, you can overdo bulletproof coffees and then you might not be losing weight and you might hit a plateau. But on the flip side, there are lots of people who drink bulletproof coffee who fat fast and don't eat their first meal until the middle of the day and see tremendous weight loss results. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, there's nuance with everything and you really need to just be your own guinea pig and test things out, see how they work for you and adjust from there. Okay, so let's talk about lazy keto. 
what it is and why. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mwah. And why I think it is actually the best way to eat the keto diet. Now, lazy kind of has a negative connotation, but there's nothing wrong with the lazy keto diet. Basically, lazy keto just means that you're either not tracking or you're only tracking carbs. Whereas what is considered to be strict keto means that you are tracking your calories, tracking your macros, all three carbs, protein, and fat. And yeah, I think that tracking can be beneficial, definitely in the beginning when you are first starting the keto diet, because most people have no idea how much of each macronutrient is in certain foods. They really don't even know what foods are high in carbs, what foods are high in fat. Protein, most people know that like meat, eggs, fish, those are protein rich foods. But yeah, when it comes to carbs and fats, people don't realize how much is in each food. <laughs> so tracking at the beginning and figuring out what foods are high in carbs, what foods are low in carbs, what foods are high in fat, what foods are low in fat. Yeah, I think that is fantastic. And getting your fats up and getting your carbs down, you have to track at the start pretty much just to sort of wrap your head around it. But I think that once you have been doing keto for a while, you kind of have a sense of the macronutrient breakdowns in certain foods and you can eat more intuitively if you will and this is technically considered to be lazy keto when you aren't tracking or you're only tracking carbs and this is pretty much how i've been eating for the last couple of years i get so exhausted <laughs> from tracking it's such a mental game too because you see how many calories are in a food and it kind of impacts your hunger. Like you're like, oh, that was really low calories. Like I'm still hungry. Or, oh, that was really high in calories. Am I gonna have enough calories to finish off the day? Oh, it's just exhausting. It messes with me personally so much. And this is why in my coaching programs, I have a meal building guide that helps you put together keto and carnivore meals without having to track. This meal building guide uses a hand portion system. So basically you focus on protein first and then you add fat and some carbs if you're including them. So yeah, today I am eating lazy keto, which is basically <laughs> how I've been eating for a while anyways. And yeah, like I said, it, there's nothing really negative about lazy keto. Eating strict keto doesn't mean you're gonna see better results. There are so many factors at play, aside from your macronutrient breakdown, aside from your calorie intake. You can get great results eating lazy keto. So one thing I'm gonna show you in this video today is how to put together a keto meal without having to track anything. Okay, so when I'm putting together a keto meal, the first thing I always prioritize is protein. And I know this goes a little bit against what most mainstream keto nutrition says, where fat is the focus. But I have another video on my channel, which I will link, I don't know, up here, whichever side it's on, this side, about if you can eat too much fat on keto. And in that video, I explain why it's key to prioritize protein. So you can check that video out to know more. But yeah, my approach is to prioritize protein first and then leverage fat and keep carbs low. So my sources of protein for this meal are gonna be salmon and eggs. And I just realized that I didn't buy the wild caught salmon, which is the one I meant to buy because farmed salmon Oh, it's not great for you, but this is what I bought, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste. I'm gonna eat this, but I usually do buy the wild caught tinned salmon. And then I'm gonna do just like an egg and salmon scramble. And my source of fat is going to be the ghee, of course. And then there is some fat in the salmon and some fat in the eggs. Now from here, 
If you wanted to, you could add some low carb, non-starchy vegetables. Usually I would add maybe some mushrooms or some onion, something along those lines, but I actually don't really have much right now. So this is gonna be like a full carnivore meal, actually. When I realized that I didn't buy the right salmon just now, I almost considered stopping filming <laughs> and refilming this again tomorrow because I know some people just get so up in arms about eating farmed salmon. And honestly, I do think that uh, wild caught salmon versus farmed salmon, there is a pretty big difference nutrition wise, more so than there is with grass fed beef versus conventional beef. But I mean, I'm not gonna let it go to waste. And it's not the end of the world to eat farmed salmon every once in a while. Is it great? No, but it is what it is. <laughs> appealing it definitely could have used like an avocado or something but honestly I need to go grocery shopping and <laughs> this is what I have and I love a good scrambled eggs so even though it doesn't look that exciting <laughs> it tastes pretty good what an absolute sleepy kitty are you sleepy okay so I put that meal into my phone just to see what the macros were and the calories. So the four eggs and the two tins of salmon, which were my protein sources, that came out to just under 15 grams of protein. And then altogether for the fat, it was a bit over 40 grams. Sorry, I'm trying to do the calculations on my fitness pal. I don't have the premium version so I can only see the individual food macros but that comes out to roughly 62% fat for the meal 34% protein and 4% carbs and the total calories were just under 600 so that's pretty spot on for what I like to aim for I got a good amount of protein which I think is the most important I got a good amount of fat and carbs were low of course, I didn't add any vegetables or fruit in. If I added some avocado, if I added that in, the calories would have been slightly higher and the carbs slightly higher as well. But really there was only, I think like two carbs <laughs> in that meal. So very, very low. I swear today I'm giving you guys the most flattering angles, but right now I just have my laptop here and I don't know if I've mentioned this on my channel, but I'm actually doing a degree online in nutrition and I almost said education, nutrition and exercise. So I have some work to do for that. I actually have like a PowerPoint assignment due in actually like a couple of weeks, but I'm trying to get really far ahead. So this is gonna be my setup for the next couple of hours. <laughs> So for dinner, I'm going to make a spaghetti squash chicken casserole. I used to make this recipe like years ago. And yeah, I don't eat spaghetti squash too often, but <laughs> am I just bothering you by talking? <laughs> oh. But it is actually a really good option for low carb diets, for keto diets. I think it's something like only 10 total carbs per cup, which I mean is a little bit up there if you're trying to stay under 20 total carbs. But generally I recommend to people to stay under 50 total carbs or 20 net. And I usually tell people that looking at total carbs is better. So I mean, spaghetti squash, I think it's great to include. I've literally had like two carbs today, so I mean, <laughs> lots of wiggle room to get up to 50. 
So I've just turned the oven on to preheat for the spaghetti squash. I'm just gonna slice this in half, put a little bit of olive oil on it, and then leave it to cook for like 30 to 40 minutes. And then the chicken, I have some chicken thigh. I'm going to do this in the pressure cooker just so it becomes nice and soft and then I'm gonna shred it. This is chicken that came in my butcher crowd order. So it is free range, very high quality chicken. I'm gonna put that in the pressure cooker with just a little bit of this bone broth body glue, which is like a bone broth concentrate. So this turned out looking absolutely delicious. I haven't had spaghetti squash in so long. I am so excited to dig it. Now, before I wrap up, I just wanted to point out that if you made that casserole with skinless chicken, it would be a lot lower in fat. And yeah, you probably wouldn't have enough fat if you did that. So I used chicken thigh that still had the skin on and chicken thigh is already a bit fattier. But honestly, I got a lot of fat in earlier in the day with my Bulletproof coffee, with the MCT oil and the butter. And my first meal was also had a decent amount of fat with the egg yolks, ghee, salmon. That was pretty much it. But yeah, even though my last meal, I think it probably, like I didn't track. Again, this is lazy keto. But I think it was still probably a decent amount of fat because there was some olive oil. And yeah, again, the chicken thigh, obviously a little bit higher in carbs from the spaghetti squash, but if you're gonna have carbs, you wanna have them at the end of the day, usually. So I think now I have some laundry to fold, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> and I think I'm going to do some reading as well. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this. I just got this reading light from Blue Blocks, and what's really cool about this light, if you know anything about Blue Blocks, you will know that they are all about optimizing light. <laughs> so it is a red light reading light. So there is no blue light or green light emitted from this, which means you can read at nighttime and it won't impact your sleep. And I was very excited to get this because I had another reading light that I've been using and then I just wear my blue light blocking glasses, but this means I don't have to wear my glasses and I can just have the light. <laughs> my hair has been in this same ponytail all day and it's looking a little wonky, <laughs> but oh well. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like these types of videos, if there's anything else you would like to see me cook or see me do when I do more vlog style videos. Because usually my What I Eat In A Day videos, they do really well, like they're one of the top performing videos on my channel, but the last one I uploaded, <laughs> I thought it would do really well because I went on a hike and a few What I Eat In A Day videos ago, I went on another hike and everyone seemed to love it and it barely got any views for <laughs> what my videos usually get. So I was a little bit surprised that people weren't interested in that one. 
it's totally fine, but I just want to make videos that you guys want to see. So yeah, let me know down below if you like these videos, if there's anything else you want me to talk about or you want me to see because yeah, I want to do what you want me to do. <laughs> If you guys did enjoy this video, you might also like that video where I went on a hike and showed you what I eat in a day. You can check that out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, it will be right here. And my keto and carnivore diet coaching programs will be here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.